Hello, I'm Teresa. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me here today. If you're one of my regulars, um, I do apologise for the long break that I've taken. As I said, I'd had some surgery. I intended to take a few weeks off. I extended that really to a couple of months. I just enjoyed the break, focusing on my own recovery and, and taking time for myself without any deadlines, without any pressures. But I'm feeling creative again I'm, and I'm very grateful for those of you that sent me messages asking me how I was saying that you'd missed me and and hopefully now I'm going to be back into some sort of routine creating videos on a weekly basis as I did. Today we're going to be printing uh, we're going to be creating some lovely mixed media prints like this with a watercolour background and some acrylic paint um, layering on top and then I'm going to show you how to turn them into these real fun little note cards as always, I know you like to see some finished projects. Quick and easy today, bright and colourful, cheery. I'm going to clear these out of the way, get set up and I'll show you how it's done. As always, I'm going to begin by giving you a quick rundown of the items I'm using today. Today I've got my 7 by 5 inch gel plate. This is my um, Jelly Arts brand gel plate. Just a nice convenient size for the paper that I'm using today and I'm going to be working on some watercolour paper. This is about 200 GSM and I've cut it to, it's just slightly smaller as you can see than my 7x5 plate so absolutely perfect size. The reason that I'm, I've chosen to use watercolour paper today is because I'm going to be using um, my Dina Wakely scribble sticks. These are a water soluble crayon, look very much like a wax crayon but they are water reactive. You could use gelatos, you could use Neocolor 2s. I was going to use my Neocolor 2s but I can't find them. I think they're downstairs somewhere. I don't know why they're down there but um, these were to hand and they're all much of the same, same product. You could use um, watercolor paint if you've got that. Albeit these tend to sort of go on the plate a slightly different consistency than a watercolor paint but you would still get very similar results. So this is set one and two, which are both um, the quite bright colours. So I've chosen to use those. And as I say, because um, these are quite a wet media when you add the water, I've chosen watercolour paper because they're gonna, that's going to absorb more colour. Um, it, it's just going to give a better result. I'm also going to be doing some layering on top of that with some acrylic paint. So I've chosen just a couple of basic colours here. These are the Arteza acrylic tube paints. I've got black and white, lemon yellow, neon pink, cobalt blue. So a sort of a, a primary set, black and white, just good basic colours there to add a little bit of interest on top of our watercolour background once that's dry. Um, and a couple of just small stencils, just with small patterns. This one's got small squares. Um, this one's got some triangles. And this one's with circles and ovals. Um, just we're not going to be going for big patterns, we're just going to add a little bit of interest. So I've, I've picked those out today. I've got a brayer as always. This is the Speedball um, rubber brayer, soft brayer. Any brayer should work. And then for cleaning up, paper towel. I've got some water and a spray. Um, and if I did need it, I, I have some baby oil here as well, just for cleaning up at the end. I think that's about it. Anything else I will uh, I'll mention if I decide to grab anything else as we're going on. But to begin with, we're going to create a nice sort of watercolory background. Because I'm thinking of using um, today's prints just on some greetings cards or note cards, that sort of thing. So I, I, just, I just fancied making a nice mixed media background. So I'm going to choose um, some colours to put onto my plate. I am going to add a very light misting of water just on the plate and that will just help get, me, get a bit more colour off the scribble stick onto the plate. And then I can just apply the colour directly. I really like the scribble sticks, they're nice and vibrant. Uh, you could use Distress Crayons as another brand that would work really well. As I say, there's a few products on the market that are all very similar type, type products.
just choosing a few colours that work well together and any area that looks like it might be just starting to dry off a little bit you can always just add a little bit more water and then I'm going to take my piece of watercolour paper and just press it down as you see that's created a really nice effect don't worry about any slight messiness at the edges we can trim this down when we've finished still plenty of colour left on there so I'm going to just add another little spritz of water thinking I might just grab another colour to pop on there just to change it up a little bit take another piece of my watercolour paper and create another background as you can see because we've got a little more water in, a, in there your colours starting to lift up a little bit a bit paler you could always mist a little water directly on there if you want to watch the colours move a little bit more. I really like the unpredictability of using a water soluble background. It, you just don't quite know what you're going to get until you pull that off. So you could add more colour, you could add more water, you could start over. I'm going to start over, use some different colours. So I'm just going to clean this off. Don't worry that there is some staining on here. We can get that out when we've finished. A bit of baby oil or some hand sanitizer will lift that colouring out of the plate. As long as you've got rid of the surface colour that's most likely to transfer, it won't affect future prints. So again, light mist of water onto my plate and I'm going to add some other colour.
once you've finished using the water soluble crayons you can get some of this staining off the plate first of all try some baby oil um, to start with that's normally a good way of pulling out some extra colour as you can see it really sort of gets into the surface of the plate and helps lift out that dye that's just staining the top Once your backgrounds are dry and, and we've got, as you can see here, a really nice selection of random watercoloured backgrounds. We can move on now to adding just some simple layering with a little bit of acrylic paint on top. So I've cleaned my plate off. There's still a little bit of residual stain in here that I know from experience will lift off. I always add a bit of baby oil to my plate each time I've finished a session and it'll gradually lift out any more residual staining over the next sort of few times that I use it. But that colour that might be in there, it isn't going to transfer. Um, as you can see, my plates, they're never crystal clear unless they're brand new. Um, the different products that I use do start to leave marks and staining and cloudiness in the plate, but it doesn't ever affect um, the way that it actually works. So I'm going to apply a little bit of acrylic paint to my plate using my brayer. And we're just going to do a little bit of sort of partial printing I'm not going to place the whole thing down press it press it down I just want to add a little bit of detail so just going to bray this white and yellow onto the plate And I'm going to place these stencils on sort of haphazardly so I can choose sections. So I'm going to take this print, for example, and press down like so to get a partial print. I can do it again there to get a slightly different print. And it's all about just building up a little bit extra detail onto our background, like so. I could take another one. I can have a look and see what sort of amount of paint I look like I've got left there. And I should be able to get a few more bits of patterning from this now if you want to get a piece of paper pull a print from that you know start off as a, as a background for another day by all means, don't let the paint go to waste if you don't want to. There is some pattern in there. I mean, I'm not too bothered. As I've said many times before, I do a lot of printing, so I've got a drawer full of prints and clean off prints. And I, I don't mind if I let some of this paint go to waste. It really uh, it doesn't matter to me. So let's let's try another colour. Let's go for the pink this time.
I could go on and put more layers, I could add some doodling with a fine liner or a gel pen but I'm kind of happy with the effect that I've got here. I don't want the backgrounds to be too busy because they are just exactly that, just backgrounds and I'm going to be putting some sort of focal image over the top. But I really like the contrast between the, sort of the loose watercolour and the bit of stenciling that we've got um, with the acrylic paint. Now I've had a little rummage, what am I going to use to do my focal images? And in the past I've used stamps, I've used digi stamps, I've used collage, ephemera, um, sort of Tim Holtz paper dolls, that type of thing. Today these are just some printables, these are from JLB Collage Club. I will put a link in the description below to the Collage Club. It's really good value if you like this um, if you like James Burke's artwork, um, it's the guy that has, has drawn these. Each month there is a selection of printable sheets. I print them onto sticker paper just because it makes it more convenient for me to then cut out and use them quickly without having to bother with a glue stick. Each month I think you get approximately four sheets. It all depends, it varies, sometimes it might be five. And there are always four months worth of Collage Club printables available whilst you have an active subscription. After four months the oldest one rotates out and goes into his shop. I'll also link that down below as well in case one of these is from an earlier month, I'm not entirely sure. But it's cheaper to purchase them through the rolling subscription for Collage Club as the price goes up once they go out and into the shop. Um, but they're sort of illustrations from his art journals and various things like that. I like them, they're quite sort of whimsical um, and I just think they're fun to use. Sometimes I just want a quick and easy way of adding some sort of focal image onto a card, onto a journal page, what have you, onto a tag. But I'll pop the link down below if you want to check out the Collage Club, if you want to check out his shop, go be, feel free and go and have a look. Um, but that's what I'm going to do today on a couple of these backgrounds, just to create like a note card, um, just to, you can add into your stash and then obviously if you want to write a note to somebody, if you want to send them a little message or enclose it in with something else, with a gift, that, that will be absolutely ideal. So I'm going to go away and do that. I never really filmed the process. I'm going to be adding this. I'm going to be trimming my background down, matting it onto a contrasting colour, probably adding a little stick of sentiment or something. You don't need to watch me do that. Um, but I'll be back again just to show you a few finished ideas at the end. And here are the finished note cards that I've made. I've still got a whole pile here of backgrounds that I haven't used. And as I said earlier, I've used the uh, Collage Club images and then I've used this Stampers Anonymous set called Tiny Text, lots of little phrases here, and stamped the sentiments and cut them out with this pink and main um, little set of dies, the banner dies. And I hope you agree that, you know, by creating a, a really nice background but 
not too busy because I just want it to be in the background. It really sets off these images that I've used here. And there's, you know, they all fit well together. There's, there's no background that's not going to get used. You're always going to find something that's going to coordinate with it. And so uh, I'm really pleased with the way that these have turned out. Really quick and easy. Everyone's just been matted onto a piece of black card, six by four inches. I've trimmed the print down and then added, as I say, a focal image and a sentiment to each one. And they're just, uh, they're, they're so nice. So you can either, at, at the moment, these are just on the black card. You can write on the back if you want, but I will just put these onto a card blank, onto a six by four inch card blank. Um, but to save time today, I mean, I've just made up the fronts to show you what they look like. So all that remains to be said is if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And now that I'm getting back into some sort of normal routine, I should have a video up every Saturday morning as usual, as I used to do. It's really nice to be back, um, back creating, back in, in my craft room, having fun, playing and sharing tips and ideas with all of you. But for now, that's all. Bye. Yesterday.